Hello, thank you so much for clicking on this video today. I really appreciate it. This is a monthly recap. Essentially, it is every month, IOHK puts it together, you know, a big long video. It's about an hour to two hours long. And it's the Cardano 360. You know, recently, it's taken a, a change, you know, a change that I actually prefer to where it's very community oriented. So that's why I titled this video, these projects are going to change Cardano because they are showing, you know, a lot of great projects that I'm really excited about. So. You know, we're going to be essentially doing a recap of the entire Cardano 360 event and telling you guys everything that you need to know uh, in case you miss those little parts. Because in two hours, uh, it's very hard to pay attention to all of it. You know, a lot of it's technical. Sometimes, you know, your attention span will wane. So what I'm going to try to do is sum up all of that information in this video so you're prepared for the next one and you know about all of these great projects that are coming to Cardano. So also, do you know how to video edit? I'm, I'm looking to hire a video editor over here at Bloom. So if you could, please email me at Peyton at bloompool.io. And on top of that, if you guys do want to support this channel, uh, please just delegate to Bloom. We have Bloom through Bloom 6. We actually mended the eighth ever block on Cardano. So we've been here from the beginning and we'll be here till your end. And uh, let's jump into the video today. But real quick, if you guys could like and comment down below, I'd appreciate that. It really helps me in the algorithm. And it also pushes, you know, this Cardano narrative out to more people because, you know, the narrative right now is it's a ghost chain. Nothing's happening. But as you can see from this video and the Cardano 360 event, that there is a lot happening on Cardano and the future is very bright. So if you guys could do that, I'd really appreciate it. So the first thing I want to talk about in this video is a little boring, but it's very important, right? So when we talk about Cardano decentralization, um, believe it or not, Cardano is actually not decentralized yet. And this is really a feature and not a bug. And it's because by Cardano not being decentralized yet, it allows us to do these constant improvements and these constant hard forks to really get the base layer of the protocol ready for when it's decentralized. And then, you know, changes after that are going to be very hard. If you look at Bitcoin, you look at Ethereum, you know, adding changes to those systems uh, is, is harder than, you know, a centralized system. So Cardano, you know, plans to be decentralized. And, you know, once we have a governance system, we'll be able to make changes through the governance system. Uh, but right now, Cardano in itself, it, it's centralized. You know, you can't really say anything else. And let's talk about it. You know, there's three pillars of decentralization, right? So the first one you've probably heard about, it was a big milestone that happened a couple months ago. It's when Cardano, 100% uh, of the transactions of the blocks are now being minted by stake pools. So that's the first step to decentralization. Um, and they need to take that deparameter out of the code as well. The second step to decentralization is peer to peer. And what this means is, you know, when I have the software Cardano dash node, and I start a node up and this node can just be a relay. And you know, your wallet is a node, you know, it's a it's a replica of the blockchain It has the whole history of the blockchain downloaded. And when you start your node, you know, you connect to other people in the network. Well, the way Cardano currently works is when you start your node, you have trusted peers that you bootstrap off of, but you really only stay connected to those peers and the people that also connect to you. Whereas peer to peer, when you start your node and you have, you know, a verified history of the blockchain that, that reaches consensus with everyone else, you join the network and then naturally connect to different people all over the world. And that's why peer to peer is so important for decentralization. And it, it may seem a little bit boring, you know, how they keep bringing it up, but it is key for Cardano decentralization that, you know, when we start up a relay node and also a stake pool, um, well, I guess stake pools will probably, you know, be behind the relays. So they'll still have trusted connections, uh, but the relays themselves will connect to everybody else in the network. Um, and it's very important that that method of choosing the different nodes in the network is designed in a decentralized way. So while we're talking about decentralization, this may be the first time that you've heard Cardano isn't decentralized. Let's talk about the third pillar, the third step to full decentralization, and that is governance. For Cardano to be 100% decentralized to where, you know, I own the network just as much as you own the network. Uh, we need governance, you know, we need the ability to not only create our own proposals, but to also vote on those proposals. And also, you know, we need to be able to determine the amount of money in each funds right now with project catalyst, you know, IOG determines how much money is in each fund. Uh, and they also determine really what you can have any idea, you can get any project funded, but you can't start a proposal and say, hey, I want to change the K parameter or, hey, I want to change A naught because stake pools aren't incentivized enough. 
So that is when we'll have full decentralization for Cardano, uh, was when all three of those pillars are filled. And one is full, but it's kind of half full because the D parameter is still not taken out of the code yet. But I, I wanted to say that in this video, I've said it in the past before, but I'll keep saying it because it's important for you to know that, for you to make a conscious investment in Cardano, because that is one of the risk factors, just truly, you know, and we need to be open and honest about this, that Cardano is not decentralized yet. So there's that part of the video. That is the peer to peer update. Let's jump into the next part. We're going to be going into projects and talking about stuff that's more exciting, but we still need to get that information out there. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is we got an update from the Orion protocol um, and it really wasn't any big news other than what was released earlier this week. But I wanted to tell you guys how now that I know more about it, how excited I am for this. And this is kind of where the title of this video came from. You know, this is a huge, huge use case for Cardano. Um, and it's also something that I would personally use and support. Um, Orion, what they're trying to do is, you know, allow you to hold your own crypto through a service like your Roy or MetaMask, you know, any wallet. And they actually have this functionality now. We can go click trade now so you can see what the interface actually looks like. But Ethereum right now, you know, the transaction fees are high. Sometimes they're $7, sometimes they're $50. Um, I actually know somebody where the transaction was $1,600 uh, during a market crash to pull out. You know, that is a huge problem. Well, what Orion wants to do is, you know, migrate their services over to Cardano. You know, we have lower transaction fees. You know, we have more transactions per second, at least before ETH2 comes out. Um, and without KYC, so you don't know, know your customer, you don't have to submit uh, your ID, you don't have to submit anything else. You can actually get the best price from both decentralized exchanges and centralized exchanges for one trade. So, you know, you add your wallet, you deposit your assets, and your assets are still yours. They're in your own wallet. You know, it's connected and you can trade and you'll get the best price from any of the exchanges. That's amazing, you know, because they're merging both decentralized exchanges and centralized exchanges together. And that's huge because when, when I try to go, you know, use Uniswap, sometimes there isn't liquidity on the coins that I want to purchase, you know, and um, this is a, a real world use case for Cardano uh, that I am just... I'm, I'm honestly thrilled about, you know, I think that this is actually going to, you know, change Cardano and look, you, you can have liquidity pools and then look, you can actually add liquidity and get the tokens in, in return. Um, this is a really cool use case. I like the interface and I'm really excited to see great projects like this migrating their services over to Cardano uh, for a multitude of reasons. So if you guys are really excited about the Orion protocol, uh, comment Orion protocol down below. Um, and we, um, I'll make a, a bigger video about this. I'll look more into them because I think I want to start making um, really project videos where we just go over big projects that are coming to Cardano uh, that are going to add a lot of value. I mean, also, if we get a lot of those comments, we'll try to get somebody on the podcast to learn more because this is an awesome use case. I'm really excited about it. This is something I'm, I'm truly going to use. So Revutu is a new project that is also launching on Cardano. They're not on any other blockchain right now. Um, and we, we heard an update from them during the Cardano 360, um, and it was really just about their funding. All of the other information we've heard before, uh, but since we're talking about projects in this video, I want to talk a little bit more about it. Um, so Revutu is essentially a service that allows you to you know, create new subscriptions and also cancel them from one interface. And I do see this as a real world use case. I'm sure that this has already been done in a traditional way, but I'm happy to see it on the Cardano blockchain. And I'm also happy to see, you know, us be able to pay services in our ADA. Um, it would be a lot better. I mean, you could do this for your business, you know, because costs for businesses uh, aren't taxed. But uh, one, one issue I have with this is, you know, if we're using ADA to pay our subscriptions, you know, the markets fluctuate every time. So when you're paying these subscriptions, you know, you're going to have to pay the capital gains cost on that. And it's probably not much, you know, if you're, if you're paying $12, uh, but what that does turn into is a tax nightmare. But, you know, if you live somewhere or you're using this for your business, I think this is a cool idea. And you also have the option, you can see it down here, to just pay with traditional USD, which is a good thing to avoid those capital gains tax. But I'm happy to see, you know, people building projects on Cardano um, that I would personally use, you know, as time goes on, as all businesses kind of, you know, trend towards subscription services, uh, I personally think that this is pretty cool because, you know, you forget about a lot of these subscriptions. If you have HBO Go, Netflix, uh, Tinder, Spotify, anything, you know, 
you can start getting charged a lot of money per month for services that you don't even use because you forgot about them because we have so many different accounts. Um, and there also is a referral program on here. So if you guys do want to sign up for this, you get some of their free tokens and their tokens are actually on the Cardano blockchain. So if you want some of those free tokens, uh, click down below. Uh, they're planning on doing a lot more with this. Um, they're trying to have a debit card uh, in the future as well. They're doing a lot, so I'm excited to see what they build in the future. And if you guys do want some of those free tokens, there'll be a little referral link down below that I'll get 10, some, 10 tokens for that. So I appreciate it if you do click that. But that's Revu2. Let's go on to the next project. So this is just a little quick update for people that, you know, want to vote on Cardano. I have some good news for you. In the past, hardware wallets weren't supported, but, you know, Fund5, which the registration actually starts on July 8th, um, in this fund, I'll actually be able to participate in because I have the means to do so now with hardware wallets. Um, so I'll be making a video, but the actual July 8th is the registration date for Fund 5. And all hardware wallets are supported. Um, very happy about this, but that's just a quick update about Project Catalyst. Uh, we'll make a video on July 8th for the registration. We can show you guys step-by-step -step how to do that. So if you are interested in that, uh, just subscribe. Turn the notification bell, click all, and you'll make sure you never miss those registrations because the registration, uh, usually they're a week or two. So if you miss it, you can't vote and you don't get paid ADA in return for voting. So keep that in mind. The last thing I wanted to talk about in this video today is an NFT marketplace being worked on with IOG, Wolfram, and Cody. Um, this is pretty crazy. Uh, this is in my opinion, probably going to be the marketplace on top of the Cardano blockchain, just considering the three individuals working on it um, and all of, you know, the research they have at IOG. Um, so, you know, what is IOG's role in this? So first, let's talk about what Wolf Wolfram and Cody are doing. They're making an NFT marketplace. You know, there's NFTs on Cardano that can be artwork, um, but in the future, you know, it's not going to be just artwork. It's really going to be anything that holds value can be represented by a token on a blockchain. It can be anything from some Yeezys uh, to, you know, a property, you know, so by designing, you know, this NFT marketplace for artwork, you know, it's, it's researching, you know, what we will need in the future when everything is really backed by an NFT on the blockchain. And so Wolfram, they're going to be doing the minting in the front end processes. Um, the minting part, I don't really think is too complicated. There's a lot of people in the community that are already doing that. Shout out to Adam Dean. Um, and then they're doing the front end processes. So I suspect that to just be JavaScript and interacting with the minting in the back end. And then Cody is really doing more of the payment style stuff. So a uh, big shout out to people that like Cody on here. They're a company that's building on Cardano. They had an A to payment gateway. And, you know, this shows that they're, they're doing real things on Cardano. They're working with Wolfram and IOG. Uh, big news for, for Cody. And they're doing the bidding processes, the analyzing ADA balances. So I suspect that kind of to be your wallet on there that you have in there. And then custodial wallets. So, you know, you having your own wallet on the site. Um, and then they're also going to be using the bidding mechanic. So that's crazy news. Um, I'm going to release more as I figure out about this. But we also got a little bit of from the Lex Friedman podcast where IOG and Wolfram are actually going to be minting their own NFTs and it's the Wolfram worlds that were made in the past. So that's pretty crazy. Uh, that's definitely going to be a project that is pushing the NFTs in the Cardano space. And, you know, it's going to be a huge use space or use case for Cardano because on Ethereum, the fees are very high and, you know, people that are selling artwork or trading artwork, you know, they may not have the most money, you know, to, cover the cost for their customers having to pay seven to, you know, a thousand dollar transactions, depending on what time of day it is, you know, so this is a real use case for Cardano. And it's also important to note that the, uh, the NFTs on Cardano are native to Cardano, you know, so uh, it just, it all works together. You know, that's one thing I really do like about Cardano is because we got to look at the mistakes of Ethereum and the benefits of Ethereum, we got to put really everything at the protocol level. So at the protocol level, we have governance, NFTs, and staking, right? That's huge in my opinion. But that is the end of the Cardano 360 recap. Uh, we will be doing a watch party next month. I just wanted to take a break for this one. I've had a very busy week and I wanted to make sure I can get this out to you because last month uh, I wasn't able to make the recap because I did the watch party. I had so much going on, but I needed to do this recap for you guys. But 
you guys have any questions, feel free to comment down below. We also have a Discord server down below. And if you have any questions, just join the Discord server and I will for sure reply to every single question that you have. If you made it till the end, uh, please comment Wolfram and IOG and Cody, you know, the, uh, the dynamic trio right here. Um, but yeah, that's the video. I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. A lot of good stuff coming soon. I did a podcast with World Mobile. It's going to be out. It's a good one. It's a good one. Love World Mobile. Very inspired by their project now, but see you guys.